Raptors have been an NBA franchise for 24 years. And in that time, they have had a number of young and talented players come through and help bring excitement to the fans of Toronto. Players like Damon Stoudemire, Marcus Camby, Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, Chris Bosh, and DeMar DeRozan. There's been plenty of guys who could be Hall of Famers. But nobody put Canada on the map from a basketball standpoint more than half man, half amazing. Vince Sanity. Vince Carter. He is the main reason why we had a record number of Canadian-born NBA players today. He never lived up to his true potential, mainly due to injuries, and he was traded. Most of the talented players Toronto has had always ended up leaving before they hit their prime years. Raptors made two risky moves to help them win their first championship in franchise history. Team president Masai Ujiri replaced the reigning coach of the year in Dwayne Casey and replaced him with a rookie head coach, Nick Nurse. Nurse helped improve the offense and was more creative and created more flow and ball movement, which helped prepare for the defenses in the playoffs. And they traded the only star that wanted to stay in Toronto, DeMar DeRozan. Even though Kawhi Leonard went back home to LA, trading for him was obviously the best move. There are plenty of NBA teams without an NBA title. Toronto is finally off that list. Kawhi had the greatest single season performance in Raptors history. And he had one of the best playoff runs in NBA history. Toronto Raptors are the NBA champions. And that would not have been possible without Kawhi Leonard. But now, since he's gone, the Raptors must move on. Even without Kawhi Leonard, Toronto would more than likely still be a force in the Eastern Conference. Last season without Kawhi in the lineup, they were 17-5. Even though most of the games were against weaker teams, it was still impressive. They were 4-5 against teams with 500 or better records without Kawhi Leonard. They will not only have to replace Kawhi's production, but also Danny Green's. The number one reason to be optimistic about the team's future is the most improved player, Pascal Siakam. Siakam let it be known that he's got next and the NBA better take notice. He got more playing time this past season and he didn't disappoint. He's a matchup nightmare for most players at his position. He uses his quickness and agility to get defenders off balance and often hit him with his signature spin move that he perfected this past season. Siakam has developed a floater in the lane and has a knack for making off balance wild shots off the backboard. His percentages from the field, free throw line, and three point line improved significantly. Siakam is now the number one option, and he will have even more opportunities to show off his game. The ball will be in his hands more, and he won't shy away from the pressure. The Raptors have a lot of key players that are on the last year of their contract Kyle Lowry, Serge Ibaka, Marcus All, and Fred Van Vliet all played a huge role in their championship run. Lyra is one of the players that fans and analysts love to criticize after his performances, and most of it was justified. But throughout the playoffs, Lyra made his presence felt with his playmaking, toughness, and defense. Lyra was the player who set the tone for the Raptors in Game 6 of the Finals and dominated that game. But as a whole, Lyra saw a decline in scoring, rebounding, three-point makes, and percentage. He also battled injuries last season and missed a number of games. This season, Lowry needs to be aggressive scoring the ball more often than he did last season. His style of play leaves him with a lot of bumps and bruises, and giving him less minutes is probably the best option from here on out. With Danny Green gone, Nick Nurse maybe need to use the backcourt of Lowry and Van Vliet more often to pick up the slack. Norman Powell would no doubt have an increase in minutes, and he needs to give more production. But I love the idea of playing Lowry and Van Vliet more minutes. Both are great defenders, can shoot and score, and make great decisions with the ball in their hands. Van Vliet established himself as a starting caliber point guard, and he's only 24 years old. His best basketball is ahead of him. One player that's been forgotten is OG Ananobi. He battled a lot of injuries last season, and also suffered a big loss in his personal life. That contributed to somewhat of a letdown in his second season. Because of an emergency appendectomy, he missed the entire postseason run. A summer of rehab and recovery should get Ananobi back on track as he still is one of the most important players on the team next season and beyond. The Raptors added players like Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Stanley Johnson in free agents. Hollis Jefferson is a tough-minded defensive player who will provide energy off the bench. Stanley Johnson has been a big disappointment since being drafted 8th overall in 2015. The staff in Toronto has a good track record on developing players, 
and maybe Stanley Johnson can revive his career in Toronto and give consistent production for a whole season for the first time in his career. The Raptors lost key pieces, but they still remain one of the top teams in the East. Obviously, I don't see them as championship contenders without Kawhi Leonard, but they still will have good success in the regular season. They won't be pushovers, and you better prepare for a fight. I have the Raptors finishing third with a record of 52 and 30. Pascal Siakam will continue to blossom into a rising star and will make his first NBA All-Star appearance. The Raptors may not have the player they need to push them over the edge and become two-time NBA champs, but Nick Nurse will continue putting players in the best position to win games.